Guess who's back? Back again. Karim's back. Tell a friend. Karim's back. Karim's back. Karim's back. Karim's back. Da 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 da. Going up against number one. Have to do it. Karim versus the best player in the game. You might be thinking, oh, oh, well, this is gonna, this isn't gonna be a very interesting game because Julian's gonna absolutely hammer him. Well, well, you might be wrong. And I'll tell you what, this, I think this game's gonna be closer than you might think. Do you wanna know why? For anyone who doesn't know, this may be one of the worst, if not the worst matchup in the game for Russia. Russia has always been bad against Ottoman. Ottoman have always destroyed Russia. Even since back since 2005, you know, we're talking about the OG days because these two sieves have been in the game since 2005 with the old legacy game, Vanilla. And it has always been a bad matchup. And you might ask, why do you say so, Lionheart, you utter noob? Well, let me tell you. The Ottoman FF, Russia essentially struggles against any... When I say FF, that means a fast fortress build. So you get to fortress really quickly. So the classic 700 gold, 700 wood. Russia have always struggled very, very hard against the two Falconet fast fortress builds. So Otto, Spain, etc. Um... They just have because of the nature of the civilization. They can't really fortress age themselves either. So they, they, they very much struggle against that two falconet heavy infantry type build. Because they essentially can only get strelets, musks, cossacks. They can get halberdiers now but in age two as well. But that doesn't really help you at all. They can get cavalry archers in age two now as well. Which is, is kind of good versus artillery. But it, it it's not very easily massable at the time two falconets would be out. So, not only is it a terrible matchup for Julian here yes. in the north of the map, in blue, playing as Madarasha, it's also a really good map for Otto because Karim, I say this, Otto have the best water boom in the game. So, because it's on a water map, he not only does he have the favorable matchup, he has the favorable map as well. So, so I, don't, I don't know how Russia can stop this water boom. And we already see it. One dock is already down. Look at that beautiful glistening water with the fish jumping out. Look at that. Just call me David Attenborough because that was one hell of a hell of a shot. Um, only the one dock at the moment. Will we see another one? We'll have to wait and see. He's not gone for that TP. So Julian's going to know because there's no TP. So that 200 wood, instead of a TP, it's gone down straight on the dock. So because he doesn't see... You can see look at the top right of the screen. I think I have to point that way. Top right of the screen. Look up. No. No. Oh. Oh. Look up that way, guys. Right at the top of the right of the screen. Normally, you can see a big round TP sign against someone's name if they've gone for a TP. So because Julian will not have seen that, he'll know that he's going for a dock. Karim, first shipment is going to be Skornaz. And look at this. Very much like lots of water decks. Got eco water cards. Got... Improved warships, got, got two galleys, etc. etc. So Julian also aging up now. Um he's wow, he's putting down a dock. Interesting. So he's now he sees Karim's dock. Interesting. Does Karim see Karim does see the dock going down? Uh, and the thing is, Karim's already gonna be up, right? That's 200 wood from Julian, and bang, instantly goes down two galleys. It's three minutes fifty-five. And he it's it's gonna be here in like 30 seconds. 20 seconds. I'm not even sure Russia will be up at that time. Poor Julian. He's not even going to be able to make anything before two galleys is out. How He needs a blockhouse or something down here protecting this. He's also making another galley. This is the Karim Classic. So already, I told you guys, this is going to be difficult to deal with for Julian. Even, even though he's the best player in the game. He really is with the micro, his... He knows every civilization like the back of his hand. He's so good with every civ. A second dot going down for Karim, but in comes those two galleys. And they're blasting away. There goes the third one. What did Julian do here? He's trying to ship two caravels and make a caravel himself. Is it going to come in time, though? Come on. Oh, this two-thirds of the way done. He gives up. Oh. 
He knew it was going to be futile. So he knew it wasn't going to work. And he, if only he was like 10, 15 seconds earlier, he would have been able to do it. But Karim just too fast. Denying that two caravel shipment and the caravel being produced from the dock. And there goes 200 wood just wasted just like that. So Julian... I told you I told you at the beginning of this. I told you at the beginning of this. This may be closer than we, we actually expect. It was either going to be a Julian wipeout or it was going to be a difficult one. But what does Julian do now? He's going to have to... He's having to adapt on the fly. So he needs to, needs to change his build order. Uh, and it looks like it, he's going to adapt by deciding to go for the fortress, maybe? He's got a church going down. He's stacking food. I think he's going to be going for a fortress now. So... Had to change his mind. 700 wood going down. Interesting. So we talked about earlier about the Fast Fortress build, the 700 gold and 700 wood. Funny enough, Russia are doing that exact build order. Except with Russia, it's not very fast. <laughs> I mean, you can make it fast, but, you know, it's, it's just, it's very difficult for Russia. Okie dokes. He's got a church down that's hopefully going to help his XP for his next shipment. But look at this. Look, Julian's on 20 vils, right? He's, he's, he's mostly, all his cards are mostly in age two. So he's kind of tried to prep for being in age two. And by not staying in age two, he's, he's kind of hurting himself because he won't have as many cards um, as he would like to in age three and four. And already, Karim on 28 villagers, 14 of them are, are boats. Long Lines is coming in. He hasn't shipped a rendering plant. Stable going down. So he shipped two caravels, uh, sorry, two galleys into 700 wood. Uh, I think we should see 700 gold now. Or rendering plant. I think we'll see 700 gold though. <laughs> Using a galley to uh, kill a uh, treasure guard in there. Very nice. Oh, he's going for rendering plant. Very greedy. So not going for that 700 gold to help with the age up. Beautiful ASMR here. Just listening to fishing nets getting casted out. That is just beautiful. I could fall asleep to that. We've got husband and wife partnerships going on here. I love how the guys are getting the women to, to cast the nets out. They just stand there and supervise. Terrible, terrible husbands. Terrible husbands. That was me. It must be my wife. Yeah. You do everything. Okie doke. Enough sightseeing. So Karim is aging up with the Exile Prince. Does he have a market? He did. I think he just sold a load of food to speed up the gold production there. There is only two whales, so it's not the best water map, honestly. He's only got two mink whales. So that's only eight uh, villagers, essentially, um, that are able to be gathering. There is infinite gold, of course. Um, but there's lots of fish. There is lots of fish here. Um, so that will... Uh, he will have lots of uh, economy on the water for some time to come. Looks like Julian's going for a bit of a... Interesting, a bit of a TP boom here. Has he gone for... So Karim is aging up. Julian, obviously, in age three already. Um, he has got stagecoach. Very nice. Um, so he's got three TP stagecoach right now. Karim has nabbed one of those TPs, which is very nice. Oh, and, and two caravels has come in. Where did those caravels come from? He shipped two caravels? Wait, why did he ship two caravels? Oh, did he age up with a caravel, maybe? Oh. I'm confused. I only saw two caravels there. Maybe we'll see at the at the end of the game to see if we can see uh, the population space or whatnot. But uh, that's interesting. Anyways, okay. I I'm I'm guessing he shipped two caravels and aged up with a caravel, so he must have had three caravels. Um, uh, but it looks like there's one galley there. So it looks like Julian probably killed because he had three galleys, right? So yeah, so that that's exactly what happened. So. Um, and I think that gold on the floor was because you get a caravel and 300 gold, is it? 
So one caravan, 300 gold, but I, I thought it was like 300 wood. I'm so confused, but honestly, so there must have been three caravels versus three um, galleys there, but then obviously there's a frigate and a dock. So Julian tried, but it's not going to be enough. It wasn't going to be enough. So um, it'd be interesting try, I guess, but yeah, that, that was, that was going to be a big amount of resources, and that feels like a waste of a card, honestly, because... Just, at this point, he just has to leave the water, right? Maybe get mortars or something. And he is actually going up to industrial. He's on 29 veils, so he's going up with the King's Musketeer. So uh, I feel like either going culverins or mortars is a really good opportunity here to take the water. He's not going to be able to take the water by shipping stuff onto the water like boats. So I think his best bet is going to be by doing it, but you know, with artillery. That's 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 your best bet, and that's the only way you can take. There's there, there's three ways, right? There's like three way maze uh, to take control of the water. Um, there's obviously warships. There is buildings like outposts and TCs, and then there's artillery, essentially just pure artillery. And the best artillery versus versus boats is culverins and mortars. Those two things have multipliers versus boats, particularly culverins. Because mortar shots can actually get dodged. You can dodge mortar shots. Um, as long as the boat's moving, it won't get hit. Um, so, yeah, def culverins are definitely uh, the best option. Okay, a couple of Falconets in here for Karim. Uh, Julian is aging up. Uh, he's got lots of people on gold. Almost everyone on gold. Why is he going to go for gold? Oh, maybe he's going for the battleship. The Imp Imperiator. Wow. I've never seen the Russian battleship, and I have to admit, the Russian battleship is probably one of the worst battleships in the game. Uh, every every European civ gets a unique battleship, uh, and they all have they do different things. Uh, Russia's um, is weaker than a normal battleship, but it's cheaper, so it costs one thousand gold, but it has twenty percent less hit points, and oh, it does more damage. But it has less hit points and is cheaper. So yeah, that's quite that's that's okay. You know, honestly, that's that's basically like a normal battleship. Um, but it's but it's only 1k gold, right? So in actual fact, Russia's isn't bad thinking about it. Russia's is an okay battleship. Uh, but it certainly isn't the best. Like Brits get a battleship for free. That's their special that the first one is free, and it's an infinite card after that, which is probably the best spain for 2k coin get two battleships which is absolutely insane uh you know portugal's i think their battleship heals other ships i don't know so there's there's uh dutch's can can explode like a depot it's kind of funny so yeah so russia's is okay i guess uh, russia's is okay but we see uh, he's not shipping it yet unfortunately so what did he spend all of that gold on I'm not sure what he spent all of the gold on. Oh, oh, m mercantilism. Okay, so he wasn't going for the battleship. He was going for mercantilism, uh, which is still okay, I guess. He's on 32 veils. He does have... And he only has one TP now. So, Karim, actually, look at the scores. We are talking about Karim versus Julian here, the best player in the game. Number one versus Karim. And look at this mass he's got here. He's got Sparhi. He's got Cav Archers, two Falconets here. He's got a frigate next to the water. This is, look, he's on 47 bills and he's making three culverins now and cavalry combat coming in. The guy's an evil genius. His build orders are absolutely insane. There's been barely any action this game other than that initial uh, kind of just destruction by Karim on the water with the three galleys. Like, that was just that play by by Karim there, the speed and the, the, the knowledge. He's, you know, this isn't his first rodeo on water. You know, he made it impossible for Russia to counterplay the water. And ever since that moment, Julian has been struggling here. It's quite tense between two of them, uh, the two of them, because Karim, he's happy. He wants to boom here, right? So he wants to be left untouched. And Julian knows he can't, after that initial push, there's not a lot he can do. So he wants to wait it out as well. So um, the longer the game goes on, the better it will be for Julian, because just because of his ability, he will outplay his opponent very, very hard. He, he has he has like he has twice as good as micro as me so he so that's about 10 times as good a micro as Karim so but uh we'll see and uh he does have two heavy cannons but that's a not that's not a big they are veteran musks but is it enough and uh bang it looks like I've got the sound bug unfortunately this game sometimes some recordings you just get the sound bug but in comes the imperiator 
And the heavy cannons need to be near the water, surely. He wants that heavy cannon done. Bang, in comes Rostislav. That's such a Russian-sounding name. Rostislav. Boom. And you can hear that beautiful sound. It's, it's bugging out, unfortunately, but because I love the sound. It's like boom, 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 boom. It's like a machine gun going off. Karim, look at that. Just destruction of that frigate. The heavy cannons do now come to the shore, but they could have been there earlier. It would have been much more useful for that to be there earlier. He's taken on the galley now as well. Can he clean up the water? Maybe this is a uh, this is this is how Julian gets back into this game. But counterplay from from um, Karim almost forgot his name for a second there. He's just diving straight in. The spy here going in for it. Are they going to find any uh, any villagers? Oh my God! There's a gold mine. You see, you see what I did there? A gold mine of villagers because they're on a gold mine. Anyways, I know, blah, 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 terrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, he does have a few culverins as well. Lot, so many cavalry archers. How does he deal with this? Julian trying to make some cavalry archers as well. The battleship looks like it's taken a, killed a load of, um, load of boats as well. He's forced Karim to spend another thousand resources to make another frigate. We'll see if it's going to be able to. I think it's going to win against a, a really weak battleship like that. He's now shipping two galleys and one monitor as well. That will be enough. Minutemen coming in for Julian. Two heavy cannons, but they can't take these culverins. And that's the magic number. Three culverins kills a heavy cannon in one shot. I think that's about, what, five veteran, veteran arch, cav archers that should have been coming from this town center. He does now have guard musketeers, but look how much mass is here. I mean, he needs culverins. What's it? God, cavalry archers coming in as well. Julian's on. He's on 58 villagers, so he's doing a good job of Zico now. Oh, what just, what just happened there? I, uh, did he just destroy it himself? I, I have no idea what's going on right now. There's villagers over here. There's a third TC. So Julian really trying to boom on the wall, uh, on the land here with three TCs. He's, try he's making culverins now. He does have his explorer, which has the eye of the assassin. He needs to use that onto the to the spy. He does. It does uh, about seven hundred damage to it. Eight hundred damage. But the spy, he's going in, and they're going to find the two heavies. And oh, there's a monitor on land. I think that's what the what killed this early. The monitor, big button, and just like that. No, is Julian going to lose this game? This is Karim we're talking about against number one. Spy, he just he can't even take the spy, let alone everything else. I don't think Julian's caught it. He's 10k score down. TC goes down. More recruits coming in, but that's not going to be enough. Oh, he's going for Manchu. But Manchu's not going to be able to take all of this stuff on. Is Julian out? Karim's on 48 villagers. So he's actually on less villagers now, but the tempo, this military mass is insane. I don't think Julian's got every, anything left in the back. More spy coming in as well, because why not? And poor Julian, I think he's going to lose this game. He's got two, he does have two factories as well. If only he had about five more minutes, he probably could have won this game. He's building mills. Manchu are on the way, but are, is Manchu going to be enough here? Manchu probably popping that from that blockhouse would be nice. Uh, there's one culverin, but the Manchu aren't here yet. The Manchu are popping. There they are. This, what, I mean, they kill one spy, but there's just so much more stuff here. And Karim doesn't... You know, he's not even bothering, just... <laughs> more, more must coming in. That's good. In melee mode. I think he's used his Minutemen. Church going down. Spy here over here. Not even Manchu can do it. Not even Manchu. These are guard cavalry archers. They have more HP than a Manchu. And uh, the spy here going down. And I think that's going to be GG right there. I think that's going to be G. Oh, no. Not the villagers. He's Maybe he can wait for the Greek Revolution, but that's not going to be enough either. Got another shipment, but I don't know. He's got nothing to ship, and he realizes it. Karim beating rank number one in the game. Guys, I told you. I told you.
It's like a rite of passage. Everyone gets beat by Karim at some point or another. Don't get me wrong. Julian would beat this guy 20 times out of, no, 19 times out of 20. 99 times out of 100. But that one game out of 100, Karim just pulled it off right there. And does this go to show how bad of a matchup it is for Russia? Julian, it all happened. Julian went for that early counterplay. But it, it, I just feel like if he just went, if he just went for like Strelitz, if he just went for a blockhouse and just rushed him instead, I feel like he would have had much better chance of winning that. And it all stemmed from that initial push and it didn't work out for him. He got delayed. Uh, he had to adapt. It almost worked, but not quite. Wow. Even got to see a Russian battleship. Now, that is a first for me. A Russian battleship. That is a first. Guys, sometimes the impossible is possible if you just put your mind, mind to it and if you just play Ottoman. <laughs> Guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Julian, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I had to post this game. Oh, God, it was too funny. A Russian battleship. Oh, I can't, can't, you've got to watch those games, baby. Guys, hope you enjoyed that one. And I will catch you in the next game. Peace.